Well, I apologise for any noises. Um, we're in the back garden, as you can probably realise. Um, there's no way I'm cutting all this like down the woods to do. It's just ridiculously muddy down there. So, we're rolling with the garden. As you can see, it's actually black and not green. Um, the decision being to choose black was um, the choice I had, all of the expense and time put into the first project um, from Military Mart, and it didn't go according to plan. So, the options was I had a brand new black one for absolutely no cost at all from my friend at Wilderness Leisure. Um, because he sold out of all the green ones. <laughs> um, loads of people complained about um, what Military Mart were doing. Loads of people went to Wilderness Leisure and bought up all of his stock. And he only has the black ones left, and the black ones aren't popular. I can't think why, it does the job. So all I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be um, fab sealing that all the way over to uh, make it waterproof. Um, in time, I might consider spraying it all different colours um, you know as a camouflage or a green maybe but in the meantime it's not a problem it doesn't bother me this is just purely just to get used to the tent and then the rest of it and the aesthetics will come later on i've got scrim nets and camouflage around me in the woods so it's not really a problem for me so let's have a little close-up walk around before we start spraying this thing well a good friend of ours has um, done all of the um, sewing for me because there's no way, I haven't even got a sewing machine, I couldn't even <laughs> begin to hand sew all of this. And it's just put a really good quality zip and Velcro fastenings all the way up there, as you can see, as we go right up to the top. And also, I'm a real big fan of these little um, paracord pullouts because it actually keeps it off of the ground. You put tent pegs and secure this straight into the ground yeah, it'll be great for a few times, but obviously for long term, that's just going to rot. And if it starts to rot, it's too late, unless you've got backup materials to repair it. So I think it's a great idea to space it off of the ground and to have a little bit of airflow in there as well. I really like that. It's come out very well. Well, here we have it, the, the zip. Really, really impressed with this, to be honest. I mean, it saves so much faffing around with all these buttons. Um, obviously, if you have got your own sewing machine and you're a bit savvy with um, repairs, mate, I, I really, really, you know, um, hope that you get time to do something like this because it will make a lot of difference. It's so quick and easy to gain entry to your tent and keep a lot of the elements out rather than just rely on these, these buttons. Um, these were originally designed a long, long time ago, as some of you probably realise. Um, technology and all the rest of it has evolved since then. And, um, you know, why struggle? Why not make a little bit of um, comfort for yourself and save a lot of time as well, boy? Just put a zip on there, nice and easy. So, that's all I've, all I've done is just zip it all up, just to see if everything fits okay, double checking everything this time. Um, I checked and chose these um, Lavu poncho halves by myself. There's about 30 to choose from, and I just went through and I found two of the best ones. So most of them, they were all good really, to be honest. A lot of them were brand new, they'd just been stored for like 30, 40 years. Um, so I was very lucky to get hands on, you know, and choose them rather than look at a little picture online and believe it's going to be fantastic. So I'm more than confident that there's no faults in these at all. All I'm doing now is I'm just going over um, the guy's handiwork regarding the stitching and the sewing. Well, there it is in close up detail for you guys who um, probably wanted to get some ideas or see how this was actually done. It's all been done really well, to be honest. And um, it is, it's a really strong, I don't know, sort of waterproofing material. Now, I'll be totally honest, because I believe honesty is the best policy. Um, I paid the guy £45 to do all of these mods, including um, the top, which I'll go over later if I remember. Um, and he's done this twice now, on the green one and now this one. And um, my mate who knows him um, a lot more than me, obviously, they said he won't be doing it again because it took him so long to do. It's so much of a pain in the ass to actually do. Um, he said, if anyone wants it done, it's going to be 90 quid. And I think that's just ridiculous because <laughs> I wouldn't spend 90 quid on getting this done. Um, but there is guys out there with loads of money and they wouldn't, they wouldn't bother really. They'd just pay it and get it done. So that is a bit of a close-up detail of um, what is actually done. Now the top, as you can see, oh, if you can probably see, there you go. It's just some webbing straps sewn on with some D-roots D there. And that is just going to pull over and hold up the whole thing. 
So here are the items I'm going to be using. This is nice and warm. It's brilliant. Um, the idea about warming this up is a long time ago I found out a tip about if you're spraying paint is to heat the paint. And when you spray it, it doesn't clog up and come out all splattered. So it might work, it might not, but I'm still going to try it anyway. Um, the idea being is if it did start to clog up and splatter, I don't want big lumps of it running all over the place. I want a nice fine mist. And I've already tried this out um, when I've got it with lukewarm water and adjusted it ready so it's all set to go. You don't want to start trying to adjust it before you actually, you know, as you're actually doing it. Get it done before, do a dry run, pretty much, and um, familiarise yourself with it. Don't just get it out and come unstuck. So make sure you know what you're doing first before you actually do it. You don't want to be wasting this stuff because it's very expensive. And incidentally, the gold version is a lot more waterproof than the standard Fab Seal. This is designed to go on to um, um, sailing sails and everything to do with marine time where it gets proper wet out there. So, the good stuff, and hopefully, we should get some results because we don't want to be getting wet in there when it starts snowing and having and praying, do we? Okay, so. Now, I've used waterproofing stuff before by a company called Nick Wax, and I tried it in two different variants, and I found both of them to be rubbish, to be honest. So, a lot of the guys really do recommend Fabsil, and when I opened it up earlier, when I had it inside, I was stunned to realise it's clear, as you can see. Now, all of the Nick Wax stuff is like a white um, PVA type solution, which resembles milk. So, to see this nice and clear, <laughs> it was a uh, it was, I didn't expect it, if I'm honest. So we're gonna gaff the whole lot in there. And obviously what's not used, if there is any leftover, I'm just gonna um, get a funnel and pour it back in here because I don't wanna be wasting this. As I say, it's very expensive for what it is, but there's, um, there's no price on staying dry when you're out there. Believe you me, I've been wet and cold too many times and I ain't falling for it again. So, we got our lukewarm solution. Incidentally, the temperature of water I had it in, it's just um, between warm and hot water. Oh, you can put your hand in it, count to 10, and you're not gonna take it out because it's too hot. That is it. So, all we're gonna be doing now, is once it's all in there, obviously, is we're just gonna pressurize it. So you just keep going and going and going until it gets very, very hard to do, and you know it's got enough pressure in there then. I'm not counting how many times, I just believe in fill. Keep doing it so it feels like it's full up. Right, that'll do. Um, this nozzle has already been adjusted for a fine mist spray because you can have it come out in a line, you don't want that. And you've just got um, a button there, on and off. And you can actually keep it on rather than just spraying it all the time so it's like a continuous spray which is great so let's get cracking There you go, as you can see, it's kind of a very, very fine mist, which is exactly what you want. Now, all I'm going to be doing is just going round and round in circles, going right to the bottom, because I've only done the top two thirds. I want to kneel down and do it as I go now. And it's really, really a very fine mist. Just have a close up to see what it's doing. Well, I don't know if you can see, but can you see it um, just landing on there? So you can clearly see what's been coated and what hasn't. Right. Um, I wasn't 100% confident um, about the amount of waterproofing that was on there. So I nipped down to a local place called, we call Millets in the UK, it's just an outdoor cheap place. Um, luckily, they had two cans of this left. Now I thought I'll just get the one because I think this is, this is going, going to be enough for what I need. Um, it's two and a half litres. This is just the standard 
fab seal. This isn't the expensive, um, good quality gold stuff, but it shall do, you know. I've got a good um, base of the, the gold stuff on there as a layer. So I'm just going to be using all of this, just continually going around and around and around to make sure that um, it's properly coated. You know, the best thing about this is you have to be confident, yeah, in what you're doing. There's nothing worse than just thinking, oh, that'll do, it should be fine. And then yeah, when you are out there, hopefully you're, you're going to be practicing um, using this equipment before any bad times or situations, just so you can familiarise yourself with it, yeah? Um, the best thing is to be confident. Now, from putting just a small amount of that stuff on there, I wasn't confident, you know? So I'm just going to uh, go to town, as it were. <laughs> two and a half litres. So this is going to do two of these. I'm not going to fill it all the way up because I want some pressure in there. Put it on. Put the lid on, shall I say. We don't want that going over accidentally. Now, this is a slightly different colour than the, the, um, the gold. Funny enough, the, uh, the gold stuff was clear and the standard stuff was uh, gold. Go figure. Right. Same old, we're just going to put a load of pressure in there. The spray nozzle is still in the same position, so we're going to get a fine mist yet again. And I'm just going to um, stick it on continuous and just keep going round and round and round, just really, really coating it while it's coming out of them. Continuous now, I've just got to guide it. So that's all I'm gonna do. Just keep going until it's all gone. Well, I was um it's probably been about an hour since the original application of the Fabs of Gold and everything was dry. So there you go, that's how long it takes to dry. It's probably a good idea to let it dry between um, applications. Well these um, sprayers really are excellent for this job. All you got there is um, a rocker switch. Now we call it a rocker switch because all it does is it just rocks back and forward to engage the operation. So you just put it back and then rock it forward quickly and it just sets it to automatic and it's really really uh, pumping the pressure out to get it saturated which is what we want. Right, let's just go quickly what we've been using. It's the hose lock 1.25 litre pressure spray, um, over £10. The Fab Seal Gold, around about £10. Now there's not a lot in there, that is just one litre. It won't even fill all of that. Very expensive, but it's quality stuff. And that one is two and a half litres, that was £20. So, 20 30 40 pounds spent just to really waterproof this tent. Now obviously I can use this again and again for all sorts of other things. I could even sell it if I wanted to, but that's how much it gives you an idea of um, what it actually costs to do this. Right, there's only one way to be certain you're gonna be okay when you're out there. It's a great idea to test all of your kit before you go out there and find out if it don't work. So this is the first time I haven't tried it yet, so we're going to be watching this together. I want to see how good this fab seal stuff really is. And hopefully it should just bead and just run off. It shouldn't puddle, so we're going to see. Oh, look at that. Should we have a close-up? Wow, that's quite freaky and that's unbelievable. Wow. Can it run?
run down there. <laughs> Amazing. Wow, I'm happy with that. That's insane. That's been drying for what? About an hour and a half since the last application. See if it puddles there. Wow, that actually works. It's actually collecting in there, look. Well, after the rain, <laughs> the shower test, uh, I've just opened it up to have a look inside, and yeah, there's a lot more room than you realise. And once you've got the silly pipe out in the middle, you've got all of the space. So you can just stretch out right the way across. I'm six foot and I've got space um, head and foot of me, which is perfect. Um, inside, you can't really tell because it's maybe a bit dark, but I've just gone in there um, and touched everything and I can't feel any water. It really, really has worked. And um, yeah, to see the rain just run off it like that, awesome. I'm not sure how often or how regular I'm gonna have to redo it, but, come on focus, there you go. At the moment, we're sweet. I've just pegged it open there just to show you guys the size of these bloody things, they're huge. And especially if you um, raise them off of the floor like I have, you just get a lot more room rather than just getting it straight down to the floor. There's big space in there. Well, I think that concludes um, our little lesson for today, children. <laughs> That actually works and I'm chuffed to see it just run off like that. So um, the only true test is to um, set it all up um, in some woodlands maybe and um, hope for a big downpour just to see how it really works in the field. Um, as a garden test or a backyard test, thumbs up for me. Fab still seems to have done a good job. I've mentioned I've used Nick Wax before on clothing and it hasn't really done it for me. But Fab still, Fabsil Gold and the standard Fabsil seems to have done the trick so well I'm really tough thanks for watching guys stay funky